I think quilting is just such a vibrant art form. And as it expands and expands, there are men who are quilting now. That used to be very unusual. And then there's a, somebody who's known as the quilting cowboy who get, goes on shows and wears this cowboy hat all the time. It's an ever-expanding field. I'm kind of wondering, you know, where it will go. Uh, Hand quilting is the, you know, that's the, uh, the gold standard. And uh -huh. that was how quilts were originally put together. And now people are using stitch as an additional element, not necessarily just a little running stitch to hold that quilt sandwich together. Mm -hmm but they're embellishing the pieces of the stick. Anyway, there, I, it's, there's just a heck of a lot of creativity and with so many, the, people use so many media in quilting, like I was saying, painting, printing, stamping, you know, collage, um, thread work. There's all these things you can do in combinations of all those things. They have traditional quilts and art quilts and all these you know, myriad categories of quilts. There's modern quilts and in the art quilts, there's landscapes and figurative and story quilts, all kinds of things. Just how far back does quilting go? In this country, quilting started probably with the, you know, the advent of the Western migration because people needed warmth, they needed blankets, and when their clothes wore out, they took the pieces and patched them together with whatever they had and made quilts. And then people got more and more elaborate about putting these things together. When you, you know, when you're when you're piecing things, why not make them pretty instead of just utilitarian? So people, women, got together doing this in, in groups, and they started doing fancy stitches on the quilts to make them look better. And one thing led to another, and then a lot of that a lot of those bedding quilts became more and more and more artistic as people you know they learned from each other and got more and more ideas and there were specific block patterns that people made up and they all had names like road to california and crossed canoes and desert star and they became more and more and more elaborate and then people ended up deciding that quilts didn't have to stay on the bed. They could actually be hung vertically on walls as art. I grew up with a mother who sewed. Um, she did not make quilts, and we had we only had one quilt in the family, which might have been her, might have been her grandmother made. It was a big Texas star, and it had cotton batting. I can remember that quilt really well. And she ran it through the washing machine, and all the batting shredded and just ended up in little pockets. And I think that thing ended up in the a lot of the fabric shredded too. Yeah. That was the end of that. Yeah. And my mother made these very sturdy, lumpy clothes for us, but I grew up sewing. I took clothing construction all the way through high school and loved fabric. But for me, I, I, all, I made clothes and made clothes, and, and for me and for the kids and for my husband, made stuffed animals, crazy stuffed animals for everybody. I made a patchwork quilt or two as I, through the 70s and the 80s, and just wasn't happy with that. Then I took one class, which was about how to collage, and just took it and ran with it. So all, all my frustrated art ability, you know, I was never able to do anything with art all those years, but at the age of 50, I was able to plunge into art. Well, with my pieces, I enter a lot of shows, and 
I win prizes sometimes, but I, I don't win a huge number. And the judges usually write comments and then you get those papers back when your quilt is returned. And mine almost invariably say, fantastic artistic impression, great use of color, you know, beautiful narrative or whatever. Workmanship needs improvement. Oh. And I'm not a person who does very precise work with the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just don't. And sometimes I get some thread snails on the back or my little stitches aren't quite even. And to me that is not important, but the judges frequently fault me on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's my, my attention span isn't quite long enough to quilt slowly enough to get it all together. But yeah, it's just different. It, it sure. is the way it is. Sure, it's a different way of yeah. doing it. Yeah, That's all. And, and I do my style, and somebody else does that, their mm -hmm. style. And, you know, thank heavens the world's big enough for all of it. There's some huge quilt shows in the country that have both traditional and art quilts. When you say huge, and, how big are we talking about? Oh, they, there will be 500 quilts in the show. And some of these, the biggest one is, is the um, International Quilters Association. That the biggest show they have is in Houston. And I believe um, 60,000 people will get to that show. Oh, my God. Wow. So it's, it's a big Quilting, both traditional and art quilting, is a huge industry in this country right now. And the other big one, it's called Visions, and that's in San Diego or Oceanside. And they run that alternate years from Quilt National, and it's kind of the second biggest art quilt venue. Uh -huh. And I was accepted into that one time. Uh, well-known quilters will sell a piece for tens of thousands of dollars. If you win the best of show in these huge contests, um, that's $10,000, $14,000. It has turned from a useful, utilitarian, life-enhancing necessity to an expensive hobby. Wow. And people still do make quilts out of scraps. It's entirely possible. Wow. Yeah. And there were a lot of women in the in the seventies and the eighties who were feeling that art quilting was a neglected art form and they formed the Studio Art Quilters Association, known as SOCWA. And that's an international association mm -hmm. of quilters and they exist to see if they can get these things recognized as art. There is a, a, an art quilt show known as Quilt National, and it's in sort of the quilting capital of the world, which is Athens, Ohio. And Quilt National started as a venue to honor art quilts, and they've been having shows there since the early 70s. They do a show every other year, and it's kind of the plum. If you can get a piece into Quilt National, you're sort of playing with the big girls. Uh -huh. And I got accepted in Quilt National in 2013. But uh, one more thing I might sure. say is that quilting also traditionally has been used as a way of storytelling. Because people will use images that explain, you know, where they came from or the hardship or their children dying on the plains or whatever it is. And um, a lot of the black quilters use their quilts to tell stories. The Dion Museum had this fabulous exhibit a bunch of years ago. These women from G's Bend, and G's Bend is in Alabama. I, I was think say it's Alabama. in Alabama. These were women who were descendants of slaves primarily, who took the you know the pioneer women's craft and totally made it their own, which was just fascinating. They outdid each other in craziness and fun and the the tradition is that you piece you cut your squares square and you cut your triangles with the right angles and you sew them together precisely these women had stuff that was just bonkers and, and crazy combinations of colors and somebody discovered them and catapulted all of them to fame and glory they got their quilts in these huge museums all over the country. That was a wonderful show to go to. Yeah, what about these these sororities of quilters? What? Yeah, they're, they're called quilt guilds, ah. and those have been going on since the beginning of our country, again, where people get together 
and, and that's what they do is quilting. And here in Ukiah, we have at least three. We have the big one where you got to go and meet all those people together. That's the Grapevine Guild. And then I belong to a much smaller one. We have a group of art quilters. And we are only 12. We kept our membership small so we could keep on meeting in each other's houses. And then there's another art quilt guild called the Ragtag Quilters. And so they get together in people's houses too.